December 3rd Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Hosea chapters 9 through 11 of the Old Testament O Israel, do not rejoice jubilantly like the nations, for you are unfaithful to your God. You love to receive a prostitute's wages on all the floors where you thresh your grain. Threshing floors and wine vats will not feed the people and new wine only deceives them. They will not remain in the Lord's land. Ephraim will return to Egypt. They will eat ritually unclean food in Assyria. They will not pour out drink offerings of wine to the Lord. They will not please him with their sacrifices. Their sacrifices will be like bread eaten while in mourning. All those who eat them will make themselves ritually unclean. For their bread will be only to satisfy their appetite. It will not come into the temple of the Lord. So what will you do on the festival day, on the festival days of the Lord? Look, even if they flee from the destruction, Egypt will take hold of them, and Memphis will bury them. The weeds will inherit the silver they treasure. Thorn bushes will occupy their homes. The time of judgment is about to arrive. The time of retribution is imminent. Let Israel know. The prophet is considered a fool. The inspired man is viewed as a madman because of the multitude of your sins and your intense animosity. The prophet is a watchman over Ephraim on behalf of God. Yet traps are laid for him along all his paths. Animosity rages against him in the land of his God. They have sunk deep into corruption as in the days of Gibeah. He will remember their wrongdoing. He will repay them for their sins. When I found Israel, it was like finding grapes in the wilderness. I viewed your ancestors like an early fig on a fig tree in its first season. Then they came to Baal Peor, and they dedicated themselves to shame. They became as detestable as what they loved. Ephraim will be like a bird. What they value will fly away. They will not bear children. They will not enjoy pregnancy. They will not even conceive. Even if they raise their children, I will take away every last one of them. Woe to them! For I will turn away from them. Just as lion cubs are born predators, so Ephraim will bear his sons for slaughter. Give them, O Lord, what will you give them? Give them wombs that miscarry and breasts that cannot nurse. Because of all their evil in Gilgal, I hate them there. On account of their evil deeds, I will drive them out of my land. I will no longer love them. All their rulers are rebels. Ephraim will be struck down. Their root will be dried up. They will not yield any fruit, even if they do bear children. I will kill their precious offspring. My God will reject them, for they have not obeyed him. So they will be fugitives among the nations. Israel was a fertile vine that yielded fruit. As his fruit multiplied, he multiplied altars to Baal. As his land prospered, they adorned the fertility pillars. Their heart is slipping. Soon they will be punished for their guilt. The Lord will break their altars. He will completely destroy their fertility pillars. Very soon they will say, We have no king since we did not fear the Lord. But what can a king do for us anyway? They utter empty words, taking false oaths and making empty agreements. Therefore, legal disputes sprout up like poisonous weeds in the furrows of a plowed field. The inhabitants of Samaria will lament over the calf idol of beth Aven. Its people will mourn over it. Its idolatrous priests will wail over it, because its splendor will be taken from them into exile. Even the calf idol would be carried to Assyria as tribute for the great king. Ephraim will be disgraced. Israel will be put to shame because of its wooden idol. Samaria and its king will be carried off like a twig on the surface of the waters. The high places of the house of wickedness will be destroyed. It is the place where Israel sins. Thorns and thistles will grow up over its altars. Then they will say to the mountains, Cover us, and to the hills, fall on us. O Israel, you have sinned since the time of Gibeah, and there you have remained. Did not war overtake the evildoers in Gibeah? When I please, I will discipline them. I will gather nations together to attack them, 
to bind them in chains for their two sins. Ephraim was a well-trained heifer who loved to thresh grain. I myself put a fine yoke on her neck. I will harness Ephraim, let Judah plow, let Jacob break up the unplowed ground for himself. Sow righteousness for yourselves, reap unfailing love. Break up the unplowed ground for yourselves, for it is time to seek the Lord, until he comes and showers deliverance on you. But you have plowed wickedness, you have reaped injustice, you have eaten the fruit of deception, because you have depended on your chariots, you have relied on your many warriors. The roar of battle will rise against your people, all your fortresses will be devastated. Just as Shalman devastated Beth Arbel on the day of battle, when mothers were dashed to the ground with their children. So will it happen to you, O Bethel, because of your great wickedness. When that day dawns, the king of Israel will be destroyed. When Israel was a young man, I loved him like a son, and I summoned my son out of Egypt. But the more I summoned them, the farther they departed from me. They sacrificed to the Baal idols and burned incense to images. Yet it was I who led Ephraim. I took them by the arm, but they did not acknowledge that I had healed them. I led them with leather cords, with leather ropes. I lifted the yoke from their neck and gently fed them. They will return to Egypt. Assyria will rule over them because they refuse to repent. A sword will flash in their cities. It will destroy the bars of their city gates and will devour them in their fortresses. My people are obsessed with turning away from me. They call to Baal, but he will never exalt them. How can I give you up, O Ephraim? How can I surrender you, O Israel? How can I treat you like Adma? How can I make you like Zeboim? I have had a change of heart. All my tender compassions are aroused. I cannot carry out my fierce anger. I cannot totally destroy Ephraim because I am God and not man, the Holy One among you. I will not come in wrath. He will roar like a lion and they will follow the Lord when he roars. His children will come trembling from the west. They will return in fear and trembling like the birds from Egypt, like doves from Assyria, and I will settle them in their homes, declares the Lord. Ephraim has surrounded me with lies. The house of Israel has surrounded me with deceit. But Judah still roams about with God. He remains faithful to the Holy One. God, these couple chapters in Hosea hit honestly too close to home especially in chapter 10 where it's talking about Israel was a, a fertile vine that yielded fruit but as its fruit multiplied it multiplied the altars to Baal and it goes on even uh, later on in right around verse 12 ish where it's talking about plowing a field and uh, uncovering all of this unfailing love and righteousness and then as they break up the ground it becomes all about them that they have plowed wickedness reaped injustice eaten their fruits of deception and it hits too close to home because that was me as you gave me more and more blessings in this world I use them for sin I don't know how to be more clear as you gave me um, incredible opportunities in, in business to speak in front of tens of thousands of people, I made that all about me and how much money I could make. It breaks my heart, the opportunities I had of talking to a lot of people about you. As you, as you brought housing into my life, I made it all about me by making it way bigger than what I needed it to be. You brought financial opportunities into my life and instead of using them for your kingdom, for your glory, I use them for stuff, for crap, for things that I don't even know what I bought anymore. So fleeting, the riches of this earth. It's really hard to 
read some of this and see myself so clearly. And some of those bad habits are still there. And you know that I fight against those demons, sometimes on a daily basis. I thank you, God, for being patient with me. For the bottomless amount of grace you showed me and mercy for all the choices, the bad choices I made. All the idols that I worshipped for so many years. I think I realized even then that some of the consequences that were happening were because of the things I was doing at the time. And, and now I do know that the uh, consequences that continue into this part of my life are definitely from making those bad choices. God, I want all of the gifts and all of the facets of me that you made. I want them to shine but not for me anymore. I want them to shine for you. I want my life to reflect you, not me. I want people to think about you when they see me, not me. God, I want all of the talents you gave me to be used for your kingdom, to help other people, to love other people, to show other people the grace and mercy you showed me. I am truly sorry. I know we've had this conversation so many times. But I'm truly sorry about my previous life. And using all of the incredible blessings, all the fruit of my life for bad. Turning all the fruit into idols in my life. God, I want one God in my life. And I want it to be you. And I want it to always be you. And I want everything in my life to point to you. And when I get off track, would you please be quick to show me that, if that is your timing, so that I can learn from it and move on and continue to allow my steps to reflect you, allow what I do throughout the day to glorify you, God. I want the so-called bad things that happen in my life to be the good that you've put in my life, allowing tribulations and persecution and situations so that I learn and I'm strengthened and and I understand what endurance is. God, I'm truly tired. <sighs> Not that I didn't deserve it, but I'm truly tired of the consequences of my previous choices. And I don't want that to happen anymore. I'm so tired of Janelle, who I used to be. Now I want to be just your child. And I want my life to be all about you. God, in your will, in your time, according to the plan you have for my life, can you please allow that to happen? I want so much less of Janelle to happen. It's so much more of you, God. I pray this all in your son's name. Amen. <laughs>